I realized that he's he's arguing about losing a job. He's like, I only have the two jobs. I got Duncan. I got fucking Rite Aid. Like, what? that's it. He goes, okay, I was wrong. I sent her a dick pic. <laughs> I talk, he goes, what? he goes, I talk sex about her. That's on me. Sex about yeah, I said, her. Oh, well, I shouldn't talk sex about her. That's on me. But now, <laughs> like, what? Why the fuck you want? Why aren't you backing me up? Like, dude, it was the fucking Bro. best. Bro, losing a job and getting caught cheating? Bro, suicide time. My name's Tim Butterly, and this is my new show, Field Trippin'. And I'm declaring war on the Chinese software developers who are using algorithms to turn your brain into a puddle of tears. And I'm a five-star general in the war on being a fucking sad, fat pussy. So give me like 20 minutes or so where you're not scrolling through your phone looking at fucking fat tits and beheading videos and cartel guys cutting each other up. And maybe let a few endorphins course through your system for a while and see how it feels. And you'll start maybe going through your contacts list and saying, oh, I haven't reached out to them in a while. Maybe he'd like to go to a fucking hot dog expo or something. All I'm saying is that there's plenty of fun to be had out there. There's no reason for everyone to be this sad and fat. When you see how we put it together, it'll come across as like, what if comedians and cars getting coffee was funny? Or like, what if Anthony Bourdain, instead of knowing about cool restaurants, just got wasted and called all of his friends gay? This is Field Trippin'. So the first episode is kind of an experiment. My trusty sidekick Noah and I wanted to see if by giving ourselves Indian food diarrhea and taking a little bit of psilocybin, could we quantum leap into the mind of someone who both appreciates and understands traditional Indian dance and culture. I think we got pretty close. Our guest for this trip is Naeem Ali. Naeem is one of the funniest comedians and podcasters I've ever met and he's just in person is one of the best times that I have access to. I've never hung out with Naeem without ending the night in a complete stupor, just making fun of each other's differences, and boy, oh boy, did we have a good time. So we started with the drip. Noah and I planned this out ahead of time. I figured I can't go too Indian to fit in with these people because then it becomes insulting, but I thought there might be some common ground between white dads and Indian dads, and I played it to the max. I went with the gray polo with some patterns on it the pleated khakis, the cell phone on the belt clip, the very cheap sandals, the very cheap gold watch and gold chain around the neck, dressed to the motherfucking nines. Noah, a little bit more ethnically ambiguous, got to have a little more fun. We put him in a bright lavender shirt with a gaudy pattern. We put him in some extremely European touristy jeans and we threw, we kept the sandals obviously. And Noah ended up in kind of like a Atlantic City, Bad Bob, Indian party boy situation. And then we surprised Naeem with his own drip. Our producer extraordinaire, Danny Dubbs, had ceremonial Indian wedding garb laying around. And we thought, damn, it would be nice if we could just take the most minority out of the three of us and really send him into Indian territory. Regardless of what Naeem may or may not think about Indian people and their food and culture, I think he really liked the outfit. These guys are the kings of fun. Yeah. <laughs> We're we're in the pre we're in the halls, dude. We're in <laughs> we are. This is fun church. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yo, it looks like fun church. Yeah, man. it's not touching the edge. That's how you know it's good. <laughs> Look at that, it stands. <laughs> That's how thick it is, right? <laughs> this is how you eat your oatmeal too with a damn straw, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you put a you straw in your oatmeal. Yeah, you sip your bowl. Yep, oatmeal, I put the bowl into my mouth. Drink it, bro. Yeah, ready? Okay, <laughs> one suck. Here we go. <laughs> That's impossible. What are you talking about? Here we go. No way. His eyes are about to burst out of his face. That is tough to suck. Yeah. Like, All right, man, I'll give it to you. Their art doesn't really celebrate uh, big tits as much as they seem to. Yeah, true. Like, it feels like their art is kind of dishonest because you true. don't see a lot of just, like, big, no fat tits. tits. Mm -mm. There's almost no tits. No. Elephants. Lots of elephants. Lots and I get that. I'm, that's why I kind of think elephants are, like, a... Uh, Oh, like the symbol like sim that symbolizes titties. I can see that. Now you're saying you hate Indian food. <laughs> normally, <laughs> normally I do. What's your problem with it? Too spicy. 
too many different tastes put together. You don't like the complexity of the flavors? No, it's too many different things. It can be overwhelming. Yeah. You I, like think, I think that's what spicy, I like about it. Sweet. No, it's good. It hits all the, all the flavor profiles. I like to feel like I'm being hijacked. I want my senses to be hijacked. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's mm. Damn, you do gotta suck that. Now that I'm chewing, the mm -hmm. sucking is, is more noticeable. I'm gonna tell you, it's too thick. I don't like how thick it is. <laughs> but you got a thick, if you got a thick liquid, <laughs> you can't suck it, bruh. Why am I doing all these hard sucks? What are we hard sucking for, bruh? It's part of the, the ceremony of the thing. Well, you like using your jaw muscles too much. That's your problem. I don't suck with my jaw, dude. <laughs> what do you? You have to. Yes, you do. You have to. Oh, I guess you do. <laughs> he like, I suck with the back of my throat. <laughs> I, suck, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I suck with the back of my throat, bro. Yo, Tim, you gotta chill out, yeah. <laughs> you gotta relax. It's families, it's families and shit around, bro. You can't be talking freaky like that. You were just never fat, were you? I would chubby for a short time. Summer between seventh and eighth grade. That was a chubby summer. My friends would walk up to me and go like this and lift my titties up and be like, titties, and lift my titties up. My brothers they would run that. off. My brothers would do that. And I'd be shirtless in the house, so they'd have direct access to my nipples. Oh, no. And they would just flick my fat, naked titties up. Oh, that sucks. I, I felt like that. an elf. <laughs> I was like an elf. I had, an elf. I had surprisingly nice titties for a creature, so Yo. I, I kind of the elephant now. Same. I had like some type of weird protein muscle buildup in my chest. That, and it made, I, I had like actual titties, bro. Really? Like actual tits? Like A cups or like a hard thing behind your nipple that was like. Yeah, like the hard thing That's behind That's what my I nipple. had. Yeah, I had that thing. And my, my parents didn't weird, know. Bro. My parents didn't know about it. <laughs> Neither did I. I. Dude, I suffered with this and it hurt and I'd be doing push-ups in gym class. I'm like, <laughs> yes, it hurt so bad. <laughs> dude, I'd be doing push-ups and my nips would touch the ground. I go, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I do 20 yeah. push-ups every time they go. <laughs> uh huh. Yep. It was like a little knot behind dude, your nipple. This it's was up. like this was months and then I finally told my parents and they freaked out because yeah. they had no idea what it was. Yep. And then they took me to the doctor, and the doctor was like, it was normal. But I was like, dude, I Same. have cancer. Yeah. I, have, I have titty cancer. Same. Damn. No. I'm not, dude, I'm never going to kiss a girl because I got fat titty got first titty. and died. No, I thought I was a damn hermaphrodite. I'm like, oh, <laughs> I was born a fucking half and half, bro. I got three little cousins. They foster kids, and they white. And my aunt raised, she raised them. She's been raising them for like maybe seven, eight years now. Damn. Do you it's have crazy. any idea where they kind of came from? I don't have a clue where they came from. But she had all this of them. This is what we were talking like about, dude. You get demoted. Old. You get, yeah. You get to make it. They got, got demoted. demoted the yeah. Black. Yeah. Yep, they black. <laughs> they, they grew up in North Philly, bro, in the mm -hmm. hood. Right in the hood. Dude, I relate, man. Mm -hmm. We had a white kid in the neighborhood that was with an all-black family. And the joke was that, like, nobody tell him. Obviously, he knew, but, like... <laughs> <laughs> We thought if we, like, everyone treated him like he didn't know he was white. <laughs> we would tiptoe around the subject and, like, <laughs> jokingly not mention him being white. <laughs> yo. He thinks he's black, dude. That has to be weird, yo. Like, growing up with, like, opposite race family. I think it's only weird if you're old enough to already enjoy mm. your childhood routine. Mm -hmm. Like, if you took me out, uh, and I, I grew up in the hood with like not great circumstances. If you took me out of just knowing where the snacks are and knowing which cartoons I was gonna get to watch every day, right. if you changed that up just because it was like not the same setup, yeah. I'd be pretty fucked up. That would fuck you up. But if, you, if you're if you born into that routine, you're fine. But if I was always on black people snacking cartoons every time? If you was born no cartoons? I'm chilling. Bro, you hit a no certain cartoons, age. You yeah. hit a certain age. If I had to learn how to dance, kid. if I had to learn how to dance instead of watching cartoons, <laughs> from the beginning, fine. But if you took me off of like the third version of Sonic the Hedgehog, the cartoon, yeah. and maybe learned how to like shake my ass, I'd be furious. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, imagine if black people really practice dancing. That'd be weird. You oh, don't? Fuck no. <laughs> it really is just a thing. Sid said you did. No, it really is just a thing. We were misinformed. We really were. Mm hmm. You don't practice. And, all right, put it like this. So there's just pressure on you to be good at it. Yes. Mm. You just got to be naturally good at it. Damn. And that's sure. scarier. Because oh, for sure. I went a whole lot of years just not dancing. And then one day I was like, I'm going to try it. You see what I'm saying? I, no experience, nothing. 
You came out of retirement? I came out of retirement. <laughs> it, I was like 17, 18 I years old. I go. I mean, this, is, I, this could it be a well. pivotal moment in your life. This could go so poorly that it changes oh, It's everything. going poorly for half the black people I know. <laughs> like, half the black men in my family to this day never dance because they're like, I tried it once. And the one for me. He still remembers the laps. He still remembers me <laughs> yes. stomping and pointing at it. Because, uh, dog, you're not supposed to be black and not have rhythm. You see what I'm saying? If you're yeah, black you. without rhythm, you look crazy. What if you got rhythm, but you don't have cool moves? Bro, you better figure it out. You know what I mean? What if you're just, like, getting on the groove, but it's like, all right, man, what are you going to show us, though? Yeah. And you're just, oh, you don't got nothing two, to bust three, out? Four, what? You're just hitting that, and they're like, okay, what's, what's nah, your... Nah, you got to do something. What's your thing? You got to have a move. No. Yeah, you got to have a move. The coolest dude I know, uh, coolest, like, the way people think people are cool, he got uh, addicted to, I think, heroin pretty bad. Actually, just probably everything. Yeah, well, he was a straight-edge drug dealer. He, okay. he sold drugs but never did them. And then he did a few of them. He was like, okay, all right, all right, we're on to something. And then he went off the edge. And now, he, now he's sober. Yeah, now he's sober. But Oh, of course he is now. He got way too cool. <laughs> he got way too cool. <laughs> Yeah, that's the coolest you can get. Way too far. <laughs> OD. You, you OD. That's the cool, yeah, that's the coolest you can get is OD. It gets no cooler than overdose. You're chilling the most. Yeah. <laughs> it's seriously not. You, you cannot can chill harder. You can't chill harder, bro. You chilled until it became a medical emergency. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. My cousin got hooked on crack like that. He an artist, so like he did like paintings or like, but he only was doing it like abandoned buildings and homeless people shit like that. So then he went to Cali. He was in an abandoned house with this like. Crackhead lady, but fucking her. <laughs> Start smoking crack to yeah. it. And he calls me one day like, yeah, I, just, I just wanted to know what it was like. Like, I just wanted to know what it was like to try it. And he was stuck for like 10 years. Damn. Damn. Yep. Went to rehab and got out. <laughs> he put himself on my way. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, you know, let me, put, let me put myself back for a little bit. Mm -hmm. no. I knew it though. I told, I told my mom he was a crackhead way before he did crack. Because he was always painting crackhead. I'm like, who does, what, what do you want to paint crackheads for? Like mm -hmm. he, he would be like across, like he was an artist. So he'd be across the street from crackheads for hours and like making portraits. Crack That's actually heads. a talent. If you can paint face fast enough to draw a crackhead. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you, should be, <laughs> you should be famous. Hell yeah. That yeah, is a talent. I'm saying, dog, you can get trapped down any rabbit hole. Imagine you got trapped down that rabbit hole, painting homeless people. That sucks. We trapped down comedy rabbit hole. We hang with a lot of weird motherfuckers, bro, every day. But look how much fun we're having. <laughs> right. So, so much fun. Even within that. This is the funnest, right? This is the most fun rabbit hole. Comedy is the most fun rabbit hole you could go down. Yeah, it's not gay. It's not it. I mean, it is gay. It's not a hard job. Yeah. It's not important, dude. Telling the truth is not important. Not who important. cares, man? Yeah, Show up. Fuck? Free speech is gay. Yep. I just want to say stupid stuff with the dumbest people I've ever met. Mm -hmm. But everything is <laughs> everything is gay, like except for war. <laughs> everything outside of war. Yeah, I got a little bit fired up when you said that. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I can do some war too. <laughs> you want to do war? No, that's the realest thing. Are we, talking, are we talking about combat? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's the realest thing. It was war. Damn. Everything else gay. <laughs> I was picking Noah up yesterday for this, mm. and I'm, I was meeting him in the Giant on uh, Broad and Spring Garden, and okay. I went in, and there's uh, there's Starbucks inside, mm. like a tiny Starbucks inside the supermarket, and I'm waiting in a long line, and the whole time I'm waiting, there's like a, like a black youth. A <laughs> black youth? <laughs> there's a, some sort of black youth. Shiesty or no shiesty? None. It looked like he was... It looked like he could have been on his break from Starbucks, but I'm not sure. Okay. But he was having a loud phone conversation. He was doing that thing where he he was like, "Why are you not listening to me? I'm trying to. Ooh. I'm trying." But you could tell he was wrong because he kept speaking uninterrupted without saying anything. He's like, "No, of course, no. I but you. Oh, but he's then he's wrong. You, yeah, like he was cool. I'm not saying I'm right. I'm saying, but what you but what you're oh. doing now is, uh, but it doesn't matter. Like he was just doing. Like, right. This dude was." Fighting a losing battle. For sure. And um, eventually, he's getting like led in circles. I realize that he's he's arguing about losing a job. He's like, I only have the two jobs. I got Duncan. I got fucking Rite Aid. Like, what? that's it. Now, I'm about to lose the other one now. And it's like, ba ba ba. They're Damn. arguing back and forth. He goes, okay, I was wrong. I sent her a dick pic. <laughs> I he goes, what? he goes, 
I talk sex about her. That's all me. Sex about yeah, said, her. Okay. Sex about blah, blah, blah. her. Blah, blah, blah. I shouldn't have said the dick pic. Blah, blah, blah. I shouldn't talk sex about her. That's all me. Now, what? Why, why the fuck you want? Why aren't you backing me up? Like, dude, it was the fucking Ooh. best. Oh, he was in a tight, he was in a jam. <laughs> I, dude, he was fighting for his life. Yes. Uh. Bro, losing a job and getting caught cheating? Bro, suicide time. You Bro, see what I'm saying? Talking sex, talking sex about someone? Talking sex. Just talking sex talking about sex her. Talking sex about her? Talk sex about her. <laughs> <laughs> Where the fuck was he from, bro? Hey, 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 I just talked sex about bro, her. Bro, this is North Philly retailers. <laughs> yeah, bro. Well, yeah, I mean, he was glossing over the fact that he did anything wrong. Like, that of was course. mentioned for two seconds. The I've rest been there. Of it, the rest of it was you. Mm -hmm. like, you're fucking me yeah. over. You're yelling at me right give now. Me a re like, give me a reference, yeah. dude. I, I just got fired. Reference. You yelling at me? Yeah. What are we doing? I, they won't hire me at CVS unless you get, give me a reference, dude. <laughs> you're killing me right now. You're ending my life right now, dude. Damn. Yo. <laughs> I'm trying to talk job man. about CVS. <laughs> <laughs> talk job about CVS. <laughs> That's just how this kid says everything. <laughs> Maybe one day I'm gonna be able to talk manager at CVS. <laughs> talk manager about it. About CVS. Yo, no, my supervisor was just telling me. She, she was talking promotion about me. <laughs> Yo. And so with bellies full of every ingredient necessary for diarrhea, brains, Swimming in psilocybin, taste buds demolished by an overuse of spices and flavors that don't understand. Three idiots set off into the night in hopes to find some sort of fun against the backdrop of a northeastern urban shitscape. Mired in heroin and I, I, this is a pretty, this is an all right Bourdain, right? Can, can we, what if I'm smoking a cigarette? And then they saw Indian ladies dancing and Harkening back to a time before Christ, even. A time before I fucking strangled myself trying to get the best nut ever. Right? This is a pretty fucking sick word aid. You get it, though. You don't even need to fucking walk you through every transition, dude. You're not a fucking idiot. Just watch the show. Did you ever have fun and it's like, you're almost like, I think the time for ironic fun has passed. I think you need to earnestly enjoy yourself or your heart starts to hollow out and you start to fill it with horse shit. And the show I, took us to a place that I, I think made us really enjoy it. The performance itself, disclaimer for the whole thing, a little bit of mushrooms involved, but lights go completely dark in the performance space. Spotlight on the band. It's like five people sitting on the ground on the side of the stage. They play the most hypnotic, rhythmic shit, but it also sounds like they're making it up as they go along the whole time. And it's just ricky dicky dap ricky dicky dap And you, you, have, you have no choice but to just hand your mind, you feel like a snake coming out of a basket, excuse the expression, and you're watching the, these brilliant colors and these completely synchronized movements by these people. Their entire lives are dedicated to performing this dance and perfecting it and preserving it. We end up in this hypnotic state where I never want to hear this guy stop making the ricky ticky tappy noise. And there's a woman playing like a, a wind instrument that's like And there's a guy hitting a drum that's like and the, the, the dancers are completely synced up and you start to notice that if you pay attention, you can notice that their different limbs are moving in time with the different instruments that are playing. And if you have enough time because this shit kind of goes on forever and you lose track of time and you're just locked into the performance, the different pieces become apparent to you. They enter your brain separately and then rejoin together and I'm, I, the end result is 100% hypnosis to the point where the show ends, everyone leaves the stage, and the stage was empty before I realized what happened. Everyone walked off the stage and I didn't notice because I was so sucked in to what they were trying to do. I know that the intended effect was met because I hear Naeem, and I, I don't think we captured this, but I hear Naeem go, hey yo, I see people different now. And I thought, my God, dude, two hours ago, this guy hated Indian food. And now he's saying the gayest shit ever, dude. So mission accomplished, direct hit. Don't let me forget to tell you about the 
clearly autistic child stimming on his bald grandfather's bald head. Dude, squeezing. Like a baby monkey squeezing his grandfather's scalp in the seat next to him, forming the wrinkles into shapes and sculpting it. And the grandfather never acknowledged it. One of the more bizarre things I've ever seen and just par for the course for going out with Noah and doing psychedelics. So the show ends, the lights come up, they're gracious enough to do a Q&A with the audience, but um, one thing I've learned about like cultural events is as soon as the Q&A starts, it's just a barrage of, of like dudes in scarves raising their hands and saying like, oh uh, yeah, um, I have a question. One thing I noticed and um, maybe other people wouldn't have is that, uh, you know, and it's just, they're just stroking themselves, dude. These are dudes that would, honestly, if you gave them a microphone and enough time, they would guzzle their own meat just for the pleasure of letting other people see it. So we hightailed it out of there, headed back to the studio. We packed a hookah full of disgusting, wet grape tobacco and, and weed and just got fully baked and, and gushed about the show to each other. You see? You see how fun it is to completely disconnect yourself from like having opinions online and, and shit like that? Just pick something. Go on, go on Groupon right now and, and find, honestly, the most Puerto Rican water park that you're able to drive to and get four friends and just go. And then if you see anyone trying to complain to the staff, punch them in the face. Beat the fuck out of anyone who tries to stop these Latinas from twerking in the water park and ruining all the white children's time. I promise there's fun to be had. If you just turn into a tiny little bit of a truffle pig for parties, you'll have a great time. If you'd like to contribute directly to making more of this shit, we have a Patreon. We'd love to have you over there. We're going to give you extra shit. You can actually go over there and consume this show in like a more traditional podcast format. We're giving you the option. If that's too much of an ask, and this is just watching it like this is good enough for you, all right, bro, I still appreciate you. Just do me a favor, subscribe, hit the fucking thumbs up, and you know, share this with uh, anyone who you think might enjoy it. Or actually share it with your enemies. Show them how much you don't give a fuck about how they feel. Kill your parents. I hope you've enjoyed yourself. I promise you I have. I'm Tim Butterly, and this has been a field trip. That's a good boy.